Hi guys, welcome back to Anna Dialogue, the dialogue on analog music reproduction. In this episode, we are going to face something very important. A debate that is currently ongoing, but that has reached specific grounding, important, fixed points in research. What am I talking about? I'm talking about the life, the audio beyond 20 kilohertz. Is there something above that that we can hear, that we can enjoy, that makes sense, including in our analog or digital re music reproduction? Let's figure it out. Go! Okay, guys, so we... In our channel and obviously in other uh, contexts, we have been all debating about if it makes sense to have a frequency response, a frequency range above 20 kilohertz in music, audio in general, obviously in other applications as well, but music is paramount as you can imagine. Now there is a huge bunch, also of you unfortunately, of you guys that take the darn word present in manuals, which says, no, humans hear from 20 hertz all the way maximum to 20 kilohertz. And that's only in your youth. Otherwise, you're all the way down to 14 or 12 or whatever it is, even worse. As we have seen in a recent ear testing I created in a video, here's a link, check it out, that was fun. That's true, I mean, we cannot hear actually more than 14 16 young younger people reached 18 kilohertz okay that's true but there's much more to it something else is going on that isn't that clear and today i'm going to finally demonstrate what i'm talking about what are my ideas and that yes there is audio beyond that and that, yes we can perceive it okay Let's take a step backward and let's try to analyze this situation in four main points. Okay, first point, instruments. Do they go beyond what is commonly known around 13, 14, 15 kilohertz? Oh boy, if they do. Oh boy, guys. I'm going to put here in the video description scientific peer-reviewed articles i have a phd in another field i know how to do research i finally decided to do a little bit of research and not that much obviously i don't have time but i did find some interesting articles and some of you said go and do a video on this we finally have some data reliable data okay in the video description you're going to find a series of our articles of scientists not just amateurs writing on their blogs on, or doing videos on internet. So these are grounded. They're scientifically proven 100%. Let's start from, as we said, our, our first point, instruments. Yes, instruments actually in this uh, paper presented by Petrosino and Canalis, but there's also another paper presented by Boyk by the California Institute of Technology, who clearly show that instruments go way up, much more than that, all the way up to 40 kilohertz. So what are we talking about? Already, instruments can reach those that kind of signal. Okay, most of you are probably saying, maybe you're right. Okay, I'll go and read these articles. Okay, now I've read them. Yes, they can, but it's the same. We cannot perceive that. Hold on, <laughs> point number two. Okay, so there's been a recent uh, series of ar articles, very interesting, I have to read the names, otherwise I'm not gonna remember them all, from Ashiara, Canalis, Oahashi, and Nishiguchi, I'm gonna put all the references here below, in the video description, and also some articles that you can download, that have demonstrated that a pure signal can be perceived by a human being all the way up to 25 kilohertz. So, that's not much, not as much as the instruments can go. But, 
that's already much more than what the common rule goes of, of the 20 kilohertz, which is also the 20 kilohertz cutoff in our all our digital darn music. But we'll get back to that. In any case, they have demonstrated it's not a hypothesis. They're not just writing this. They demonstrated that that people some that humans can perceive, which means, as I said in other videos, we are hearing with different parts of our body, with pressure, uh, with with our e obviously not only with our ears but with our body. They perceived tones reaching more above than twenty five kilohertz. So that's already a very interesting point. Okay, so point number three. This is where interesting things come in, okay? So we, we talked about a pure sine wave going up to 25. Okay, so there are a series of articles. I'm just going to propose one of a real viable scientist called Ashiara, who uh, recently published a paper where he demonstrated that uh, all the way up to 20, 38 kilohertz, 38 kilohertz, were hearable, were perceivable, were identifiable, that they were coming from specific loudspeakers <clears throat> all together. What, what am I trying to say? He played the different sine waves and people could not hear above 2022 in that case. But when he played all those sine waves together with one loudspeaker, they finally heard, perceived, all the way up to 38 kilohertz. Why is this? The key word is harmonics. That's where everything changes. That's why my ear hearing test is useful only at a certain point. If you don't mix the darn signals together, they're not going to create new nuances, new signals called harmonics. And those harmonics go way above guys way above that is where finally we have that high fidelity that we are missing completely lacking in all our recordings that is why a recording never sounds like true live music if we don't start to insert these harmonics these high frequencies the same could be told also for the lower frequencies obviously but we're focusing on the high frequencies Otherwise, we're, we're never going to have a true high fidelity recording. Again, we'll get back to this. What's the big problem there? So this has been demonstrated. Again, I'm going to put the paper here, Ashiara. So our last point, our fourth, fourth point, which I think is also interesting, that, for example, I'm going to put a paper of, I have to read it, the, these names are incredible, Han Moy and several other, other scientists in his team have demonstrated that there's a lots, lots of articles of, the, of this kind that easily, when we're going above 22 kilohertz, all the way up to 50 kilohertz, our brain is reacting. It's not flat, like we're not playing anything, then it's flat. When we turn on those high frequencies, our brain starts to elaborate, starts to somehow receive that and interpret that in, in some way. That is also part of a high fidelity sound reproduction. Again, if we're missing all these aspects, including our brain working, dealing with those high frequencies, obviously we're missing a great huge part of music. And that is why, again, I'm sorry if I'm repeating myself, but that is why a stupid CD is never going to sound lifelike. Okay, so I'm just going to reach now the, the, the closing part of this video, which I think is important. And I hope you're going to share because there's so many people who just say, no, 2020, here's the manual. No, guys, no, that's old. That's ancient. That's prehistory. So what is the big problem here? The big problem is, unfortunately, that we have all our recordings, well, mainly I would say 99.9% .9 recordings since the beginning of the audio industry, the recording industry till now, have used microphones that barely reach, we could say, 20 kilohertz. So we're never gonna have high frequency recordings. That's, that's the main huge problem. That's why high definition music does not make sense, unfortunately, unless you're using 
high frequency response microphones and they do exist all the way up to 100 kilohertz I, I know there exist even more probably so if we start using those microphones and obviously it's important to keep that signal whole uh, integral with during the mixing and mastering because also the resolution goes down dynamic range and frequency response go down while the um the producer the the mixing guys uh, the mastering guys are working with the files because we're talking about digital mainly they, they start lowering unfortunately the quality then they put it back up to that frequency response they wanted in order to publish it and sell it as high resolution audio but unfortunately that is not the case Unfor until we use these microphones and we lose along the way all this quality converting it and, and cutting it filtering it Ooh, you guys you can't even imagine how much we're losing along the way okay so this is a fundamental point until we have the standard quality cd which has a cutoff i know you know i know that you, you guys know this but a lot of people don't know standard quality cd is a 16 bits resolution parts with a sampling rate of 44.1 kilohertz which brings to a 20 kilohertz frequency response and at that point there's a cutoff everything beyond that is not present you can easily see it in the spectrums i've see i made a lot of videos where you can see this artificial cutoff here's a link of one of these videos so unfortunately if we have this cutoff even in our basic cds we're missing a huge part of music you guys i know a lot of people don't care they want even mp3s or low quality streaming where we're cutting even the audible frequencies at that point so you can imagine what kind of crap is coming out of there but in any case we're mainly focused we're interested in high quality music so we have these big issues with cds with the microphones and also in the production of a recording what the last thing i want to leave you guys with the last thought which i think is important is that analog media notably tape and vinyl mainly can deliver a higher frequency response than digital files oh yes baby they can go much much higher especially vinyl can accept even it was demonstrated 100 kilohertz frequency so no problem in that and digital cannot do that now until we we have these restrainments with the the, the uh, bit rate and also the data compression which are two two aspects of the problem but completely different data compression and the frequency and frequency and sampling rate the dynamic range of digital is uh higher or at least it's a, it's better than analog there we have a little bit of a problem but it's not as low as we think that's also something completely demystify and completely wrong um, the communication of these low dynamic range in, in, in analog uh, com components and media that is not true in any case this is not the point of the video the video is that there is life there's audio well beyond 20 kilohertz please go and read the documents i put in the video description thank you guys for watching this video and remember music is born analog